uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is here, and there's all of my friends out there in TV land over over that YouTube TV. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube TV channel, and uh, thank you one and all for being here. Thank you so much. It's been a long week and uh, an interesting week too, you know, uh, in the news, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit. But before we get into all of that, let's give that hearty hand clap as we do every week, right? That hearty hand clap. Uh, yeah, we do that every week. Every week we do that because we do that for the doctors and the nurses, first responders, firefighters, and police officers who have been with us all of this time right through the pandemic. And everything looks good so far as far as uh, our environment goes and as far as, I don't know, everything goes. Uh, because the pandemic is still on, but still in all, we want to make sure that, that you know that uh, even though if you take vaccinations, whatever, uh, to keep you strong, still continue the protocol. Still continue that protocol. That protocol is very important. And what I mean by that is wearing your mask, gloves if you want, you know, if you have to, you know, keep hand sanitizer in your bag, your briefcase or whatever, when you travel along in your pocket. They have, they have those little size bottles that you can take with you. Um, and you can rub it on your hand every once in a while, but make sure you have to do that. That's very important because of the fact that uh, the virus is still on. The virus is still on and it will be here for quite a while. And um, if you look up in our subject area, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you look in the chat area, you see at the very top of the chat area, have information. And then you see over there, I have the name of the show and uh, today's date and underneath that information that's applied to me, such as my email address and my telephone number. Underneath that, you see what they call COVID test, COVID-19 test. And there's a phone number either next to it or underneath it, depending on how you're watching it. Take that number down because it's very important. As I leave it up there every week and make sure that you know that you can contact that uh, number anytime anytime, 24 hours a day. Now it's a New York number, but wherever you are in the world, we'll give you the same information as if you had a local number in your area. And if you don't know your local number on how to get information, uh, questions to, um, to the virus, you need answers to that, they can give you all of that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure anywhere you are around the world, you have that information, or they will give you that information. You have a telephone number, a local telephone number in your area that will get you by. And uh, they can tell you also where to get the test, the COVID-19 test, which is a simple test. It only takes five seconds and um, slightly uncomfortable, just slightly uncomfortable, but it's well worth it. And you get that every once in a while. Now, if you haven't been vaccinated yet, stay on that. Now, those of you who have been fully vaccinated, well, congratulations to all of you. I have just been officially uh, vaccinated fully uh, yesterday, yesterday morning, and uh, people were asking me yesterday, how do you feel? How do you feel? Because that second vaccination is supposed to be the one that, you know, your body responds to, and maybe it, 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 it reacts to different people in different ways. Uh, some people um, get headaches, nausea, you know, something like that. Um, I had, you know, a personal friend said that they had a you know, a couple of days of diarrhea, but it all passed. Me, as for me, nothing's happening yet. You know, nothing's happening yet. So far, so good. You know, uh, the only thing that's, I don't know, I guess you can call it a side effect, you know, it's a little achy, you know, but that's to be expected. Everybody is going to get achy when you take the test, when you've administered, when they administer the test to you. Because yesterday when I was at the pharmacist, the guy told me that. The guy that, you know, gave me the shot yesterday, he told me, hey, you know, he asked me if I was going out to, uh, tomorrow. I said, ah, yeah, I told him, I said, yeah, I'm staying home, but I'm here. Right? Yeah, I'll stay home. And he said, well, the reason why I asked is because, you know, you, you may feel a little sick, maybe not sick, but uh, you're not going to want to feel like going out. And I said, OK, um, any nausea? He says, no, I don't think you're going to get nauseous or anything. But, you know, you might feel a little achy, you might get headaches uh, or something like that, you know. 
So far, I have none of that. I'm not saying it's not going to happen yet. Maybe it didn't kick in yet. I don't know. Uh, right now, I'm feeling great that I didn't make it here this morning. So uh, let's hope that I get it right through uh, the rest of the day. Uh, good morning. DJ Pete is here and Brian Camp is here. All you guys, good morning. Uh, they're going to be here uh, for the 2020 feature. Brian Camp will be here first, 20 past the hour with his update of sports, the sports update, bringing you the latest developments in today's world of sports. And he has a lot to talk about because baseball is back and he's going to be talking about that too. DJ Pete will be here 20 to the hour and uh, he'll bring you... Uh, you know, entertainment news. And of course, he'll recite all of those birthdays of people in notoriety uh, who are celebrating birthdays this week. He'll tell you all about that. And so that's what's expected. And then it's going to be you and I, all of us together. And uh, we do this every week. So stand by. And uh, by the way, I haven't raised my cup this morning. So let me do that right now. Uh, what would the coffee hour be without a little coffee? So excuse me while I shoot up. Okay, there you go. The first shot of the day. And I did it orally, as opposed to. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for being along. Yo, I, I was listening, of course, all week long, we were talking about, um, we've got this thing, uh, there's just so many things going on in the news. First of all, I want to say uh, to all of my Asian brothers and sisters, I am with you. Um, and I stand with you, I stand by you, I stand up for you, uh, because of course you guys know in the news that uh, there's a lot of things going on um, uh, in the Asian community. A lot of Asian uh, American, Asian Americans are being attacked in the street. We had just one in a couple of days here in New York City where I am right now, we had a couple of uh, one, and they showed it on video, but it, the video didn't look good. It was a store video, a store camera, and it didn't look good. Uh, it was hard to detect the images, but you could see the images, and there was a lady walking down the street, a 65-year-old lady, a 65-year-old Asian lady walking down the street, and all of a sudden, some guy comes out, and he approaches her, and he kicks her in the stomach. She falls to the ground, and um, then he kicks her three times in the head. 65 years old, but they found another video from another uh, camera, you know, one of those uh, uh, surveillance cameras that everybody's under, everybody's under surveillance. Don't care who you are or what you are. Uh, everyone is under surveillance and he's walking down the street and they found a perfect image. And I do hope, you know, uh, whoever, you know, I don't have the video, but I, you know, watching the news, I do hope they get this guy. I really hope they get this guy and he gets exactly what's coming to him. You know, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Well, uh, one of the reasons is that sometimes you get uh, some one little piece of crap that I can pull off my shoes, right? Will say things to foster this kind of behavior from other people. And uh, so we have to be very careful how we treat other people because, listen, that same 65-year-old lady may have to breathe life into this guy. You never know. That's why you have to be very careful how you treat people. So, yes, I stand with all of my Asian brothers and sisters, and I don't give a damn who knows it. I stand with them. Uh, also, I want to send out prayers to uh, the Floyd family, the family of George Floyd. Uh, of course, you know, he... It's almost been a year, it's almost a year since he's left us. And now the trial is in court. It's in court. And we're in the fifth day. Today is the fifth day of the trial. And who knows how long this is going to go on. And I'm pulling for the family that they get justice. And uh, I've been keeping up with it. I've been keeping up with it. And uh, listening to some of the testimonies, and the people, you know, some of them break down on the stand. And, and, and you know, it, it's just heart wrenching that, you know, you look at this and you can't imagine unless you were there. You know, these people actually witnessed this whole thing. And so I'm just hoping that they, you know, get the professional help that they need. Uh, and uh, because a lot of them are traumatized. 
I mean, you had kids up there. Of course, they didn't show their images while they were on TV because they were too young. But you had kids uh, 17, 18 uh, years old, nine years. There was a nine-year-old girl had to go up on the stand to testify. And, uh, you know, no child at that age should ever have to go through that. And when the girl's 17, her cousin at the time was eight years old and she was 17 years old at the time. She's 18 now, her cousin is nine years old now, but that's still young. And no one should have to go through that, not even adults. You know, and I just hope that there's hope for them and there's help for them. And uh, if they need it, you know, of course, information is available to them. We're gonna to try to get some information, information is available to them. We're gonna to try to get some information for you to post up there uh, just uh, just a while, uh, a few minutes from now. Right now, um, it's uh, 12 minutes past the hour right now. And uh, how's your weather forecast? Let me tell you about my weather forecast because it's nice right now. It is. It's really nice out. The sun is bright. It's out there. Uh, and the weekend is not going to be bad. It's nothing wet. We have, uh, let's see, we have 31 degrees at the moment. The temperatures are going to go high, a little bit higher. It's not going to be that warm today. Uh, it's going to be partly cloudy skies this morning and will be overcast during the afternoon. We'll have a high 43 degrees. That's the high. And um, winds will be northwest at uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And for tonight, partly cloudy skies, low 31 degrees. Winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For tomorrow, the temperatures go up higher. It's going to go up a little bit higher. We're going to have sunny skies, high near 55 degrees. Winds will be uh, northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for Saturday night, mostly cloudy skies, low 42 degrees. Winds light and variable. And as we wrap up our weekend, Sunday, it's going to be cloudy skies early. But it will be coming partly cloudy later on in the day. We'll have high 64 degrees and winds will be west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Repeating our current temperature right now, it's 31 degrees, but let me double check that for you to make sure. Uh, let me go to the, it's 32 now. It's 32 degrees. And uh, the sun comes, it's peekable sunshine, but it's more, right now it's more sun. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna cloud up a little bit later on in the day. So as you come in, as you come in, give us your weather forecast and let us know how it's going in your area. And uh, so there you go. So that's where we stand right now. And uh, I just want to say hello, wave to all of the people who are coming in, say hello and uh, happy Friday to each and every one of you. And stay with us because it's going to have a fun trip today. So, excuse me. Oh boy. Week goes by so fast. Week really goes by so fast. And I'm still going to keep up with the uh, the trial, and that's uh, it's not a it's not a it's not a George it's not a George Floyd trial. This is a David uh, Chauvin's trial. Chauvin's that's his name. Chauvin's Chauvin's, and it's his trial, and uh, he's the police officer that, that was accused of uh, murdering uh, George Floyd. And again, I am wishing, got my fingers crossed for the family. Uh, they received a, a sum of money, but that money will never bring their child back or their cousin back or their father back, anybody that's related to him. And they had like, I think about five people testified yesterday. They had two paramedics, um, one former police officer and um, uh, his girlfriend testified yesterday and they, they're calling in a lot of people. I can't wait to the officer that stood by, I think his name was Lynn or something like that. If, if I'm, if I'm making mistaken about the name, please correct me. I would appreciate that. But I can't wait to him to see what he has to say because he was the one that was standing by when all of this was happening and the, the crowd was just saying, hey, can't you talk to this guy, get him off. You know, he can't breathe, he can't breathe. They're smothering him, you know. And he's just standing there looking around, looking around holding people back, get on the curb, you know. Can't have to wait to see what he has to say. You know, the way I see it, um, this should be a case where 
justice prevail. But who knows? Who knows? I've seen a lot of strange things happen, and who knows? We're going to have to see how everything pans out. That's why everybody is staying on top of this thing. So there you go. And, uh, of course, all of my friends over at YouTube, um, this is our sixth week with you. And we just started this six weeks ago, our sixth time with you. So we want to thank you for being with us and invite your friend and just stay on top of my YouTube channel and uh, see when we're coming on each week. I'd like to bring all of that information to you. Okay, it's uh, 17 minutes past the hour. We're just a couple of minutes away from Brian Campbell. We'll be here with the latest developments in today's world of sports. And uh, we'll talk about that. By the way, um, I want to give you information. I already gave you the number on the, how to get in touch with people. If you have questions, you want to know where to go to get the test. You want to know to get. Uh, want to know where to go to uh, uh, get uh, vaccinated. The information is right there. I gave you that number. If you look in the subject area for you guys on Facebook, it's in the subject area for you guys on YouTube. It's at the very top in the chat area. And that information is there and it will give you information on how to get that. Now, I have a piece of information. This is New York only. This is a New York website. And for those of you who haven't been vaccinated yet, please do that. You know, get off the fence, get off the fence. When they inject you, they're not going to track you. There's not going to be any tracking devices uh, or chips or anything like that. So please, you know, get that out of your head and take the test is very important because the reason why it's very important because of the fact that the more people take it, the quicker we can get rid of this. And so please get off the fence. Now, for those of you in New York City who need a website on how to get the uh, get vaccinated, where to go to get vaccinated, I have one here right now for the time being. It's NYC, it's NYC vaccine list. One word, NYC vaccine list. Dot com. You got that? NYCVaccineList.com. And you can go there and, you know, surf through that and find out where to go to get vaccinated in your area. You can go to any pharmacist that may, be, may have availability for you. And uh, if you qualify, by the way, it won't be too long now before every age, any age bracket will ever will get the uh, vaccinated young people, older people, and that's going to happen. So everyone is going to receive it. And when it comes to your area and you're qualified to do that, please do it. Don't think about it anymore. All right. Because people, uh, you see, we had a spike going down, but see, don't forget in certain parts of the country, people are still going out and doing their thing and not wearing their mask and not, you know, taking the six feet distance seriously. As a matter of fact, we got another serious spike coming along. And that's, you know, that's in certain places here in New York. Nothing didn't hit yet, but who knows? Who knows? Michigan is one of them. Florida is another place, you know. And uh, I wish Mary were here so we so she could tell us what's happening in Florida. Neoto just walked in. So good evening to Neoto. Good evening. I say good evening because he's coming out of Japan. He's coming out of Kobe, Japan. And uh, so he, so it's evening to him. It's after midnight or after 11. I can't remember offhand, but uh, uh, we say good evening to him as he says good morning to us. So thank you, Naoto, for being with us. Naoto, you know, we're going to put Brian on the line right now. But in the meantime, I want you to give us a weather forecast. Pete, you know, drop one on me if you like to. I appreciate that. Brian is going to give us one, too. Because Brian is on the line with the latest developments in today's world of sports. And, Brian, you have a lot to say this morning. Yeah, um, I, I guess you could say I have a lot to say, but I'm going to go through it quick, quickly. Uh, first first things first, um, um, it's 37 degrees out here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's very brisk and cold and everything, but um, it's, gonna, it's sunny. It's going to be sunny all day today. And happy Good Friday to all our believers. Um, from Good Friday to Eve, this is a, a Christian Jewish holiday where Jesus Christ um, was crucified and um, for our sins. And I um, would say um, to all, happy Good Friday to all. And um, just want to say uh, hello to Naoto and to Pete and to everyone.
every anybody else that's out there. But um, in sports, um, baseball is back. Baseball is back. Opening day was yesterday. Um, your beloved New York Yankees lost their home opener, um, their opening game, in a um, extra innings. They went to extra innings and they lost three to two. Uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays. Sorry to hear about that, but don't feel bad. You got company. My <laughs> beloved San Francisco Giants had a big lead, and I watched some of that game, and um, we was winning, and we lost in extra innings, 8-7. to seven. Well, Boy, was I in a bad mood when, when I went to sleep. But they <laughs> lost. Uh, the other New York team in New York, the Mets, was postponed against the Washington Nationals. You want to check out your other stories? Scores and um, teams, or uh, you check your local listings. Um, baseball is here now, so we should be back at full swing. Not almost at full swing with capacity crowds, but there will be some in some stadiums with a certain amount of capacity. Well, the final four are set for men's and women's college basketball. Um, starting tonight with the women, April 2nd at 6 p.m. It's South Carolina versus Stanford. Uh, that game will start at 6 p.m., like I just said. Um, you could uh, check your local listings. And the second game would be the Arizona Wildcats versus the Yukon Husky. The Lady Huskies, as they call them. That second game starts at 9.30, where the winner uh, will be April 4th on Monday for the national championship game. And for the men's side, April 3rd is tomorrow at, five, at 5.14. Tip-off time is the... Houston Cougars versus the uh, versus the um, Be- uh, Bella Bella University will be uh, playing in the first uh, first semifinal, and the second one is UCLA versus Gonzaga, and that game the tip off for that game is approximately eight thirty four. So there's your men's and women's final four in college basketball. Um, so tune in in basketball, pro basketball. Um, uh, Michael Rappaport, who's a comedian, um, uh, you, you see him a lot on um, stage, and there's a little acting. Was in a was in a uh, social media battle with Kevin Durant. It got so heated that um, Kevin Durant said something about his wife, and children, and you know that's a code on the streets out here that you don't talk about. You leave the wife, the children out of it, Don't, it shouldn't, their, their name should never come out of their mouth. And, you know, it's um, it's an unfortunate thing. It got out of hand. Apology was issue. But Kevin Durant has a history of getting into these here social media battles with um, personalities like Charles Barkley and Stephen A. Smith. And, um, you know, you're making all this money, you know, turn it off. You know, you know it, it makes you look silly. It makes you look like a child. You don't really need to really get in, into that back and forth with that social media that battle. So it, it needs to stop. It's crazy, and it makes you it makes both sides look really foolish and everything. So knock it off, guys. In pro football, Washington football team owner Daniel Snyder has gained complete control of his franchise. He brought out um, his two uh, my, uh, minority owners, um, um, Fred Smith and Dwight Shaw, and Robert Rothman. Um, so he, he, the NFL approved a $450 million debt waiver as well as the $875 million sale. So Daniel Snyder is complete owner of his team. We don't know whether or not he's going to uh, change the team, but right now the team name is still the Washington football team. So that's, um, that's, that's how, where we stand with football. Oh, oh yeah, uh, other moves in football, let me tell you. Now we're going to have 17 NFL games that schedule. Yes, 17 games. What an odd number. The NFL has decided to increase it. Um, they're still trying to work out some details. Um, we'll, we'll, well, what, what we know as right now is that a lot of the players, all the players are going to get a pay increase. Um, everybody's going to get paid. The owners are going to get paid even more. Um, when you deal with cable and television network contracts, money starts rolling in. Now, a lot of the NFL players are not happy with this. 
they do not like it. But I could just tell you right now, I don't think they could fight it anymore because this is what they signed at the bargaining um, table uh, when they did their um, their uh, renegotiation. So um, as of right now, this is this is what it's going to be, and the NFL players are going to have to deal with it. Now, what I do know is that the NFL will have will have one less preseason game instead of four. It will be three. Um, so uh, we don't know about who will have more home games. What I do know is that one year the AFC will have an extra home game and the following year the NFC will have an extra home game. It's, you know, a lot of things got to be worked out. So um, 17 games, the Super Bowl is um, originally was supposed to have been scheduled for uh, February 6th of 2022. Now Now it's expected to be pushed back an extra week to the, to the 13th because of this. So, um, um, like I said, things are going to be worked out more uh, in in the upcoming weeks. Schedules are not out yet. And when they do, um, we'll give you some more information. That's sports. Hey, did you hear about that? Uh, speaking of, before we fall off sports, did you, did you hear about the situation, even though it's three months away from now, that the All-Star game originally supposed to be played in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're trying to, they're working to move that out of there. Did you hear about that? Is that the basketball no, the, game? No, the, no, the, uh, the all-star game, baseball all-star game. Oh, the baseball all-star game. No, I did not hear anything about that. No, okay. I didn't hear anything about the baseball all-star game. You know, it, you know, the way things are going, we may not even have a baseball all-star game because of the pandemic. We will we don't know because if the numbers are going down and the people are getting vaccinated, we will have an all-star game. But right now, you know, this is a week to week thing. Players are still players are being held out because of the virus. So, so we don't even know uh, what's going to happen in the next month or so. You know, this is a week to week thing. Yeah. Uh, things are going to get better. We hope that they are going to get better. And if everybody will follow protocol, we will find out more news and maybe more people can come to the games and maybe they will have a definite on the All-Star game coming up, yeah. which is usually in July. Yeah, well, they, that's why I say, you know, keep uh, I tell everyone this, to stay on top of uh, the protocol of, of wearing a mask and things like that. It's not bad. We're not doing bad so far because we had 20 percent of the crowd at Yankee Stadium yesterday. And um, but in some stations, some uh, cities, they went 100 percent, you know, and even even the president made mention about that. He said that wasn't a good idea. And I agree with him on that. But 20, 20 percent capacity wasn't bad, you know, because the people were widely separated and they had enough crowd there to, to cheer the guys on. It was great. Well, I will. I will tell you this. I know in, in basketball, they are letting some family members come into the arenas, but they still have those cardboards put up as well to those cardboard fans. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought they. I thought they got rid of that altogether. You know. Yeah. But uh, that's a, that's so good. That's so good. Uh, uh, by the way, before you go, I, we, you and I talked last night about getting help for people who are getting help with the trauma, just you know, due to this. Um, the George uh, Floyd situation. Uh, if you notice in the uh, in the chat section, I posted a website called uh, BetterHelp.com for anyone who yes, needs any yes, help. I see that. Yeah, huh? anyone who needs any help, you can go comb through that website. And if I can get even more information than that, I will. But that's what I found, and um, I just want people to have that information, people who needs help, because there's a lot of people who watch these things yesterday on TV. Not only the people who actually were there, but people who watch this thing at home, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, you know, suffer with a lot of anxiety about it, you know, because it's not a good time right now for a lot of us. So that okay. information is there. Okay, Brian, thanks for the sports. We'll see you next week. All right, take care. Okay, that was Brian Camp with the latest developments in today's world of sports, sports update. He's here every week, and he's also on our radio show every Thursday night, uh, Talk Back Live, with the latest developments in today's world of sports. So, <coughs> excuse me, he completed his portion of the 2020 feature. Now, the next portion of the 2020 feature comes with DJ Pete. That's 20 to the hour, and he's going to give you information on uh, on sport, not sports, uh, in uh, entertainment information of course he's going to recite all of those birthdays of people of notoriety who 
are celebrating this week. If you haven't had a chance to check out my um, podcast, The Blue Cafe, you know, that's a podcast that I just started this week. Uh, I love doing it. I, I go back to interviews because I haven't done interviews in a long time. You know, and what, when I was doing my DJ work, you know, it didn't give me time to do that. People were asking me, oh, yeah, I like to be interviewed on your show, but we didn't do interviews on that show. I didn't do any interviews at all. But I got this show called uh, The Blue Cafe, and I interview people of, of um, newsmakers and people of entertainment. And uh, you go there, if you look up there, for those of you who are on Facebook, look up there or look over here, or look down there, depending on how you're watching the show, and you'll see the information there uh, in, in the subject area. And if you go way down to the bottom, it says Blue Cafe, and it gives you the direct link. Now, if you're watching on a YouTube channel, you'll see it's way up there at the top in the chat area. That's the very first thing up in the chat area. I always make the point to get that up there first. And you'll see that. And um, all you have to do is go directly to the link. And my latest uh, interview was with uh, Jimmy Clanton. He was one of the golden boys from the 1950s. And I had an interview with him. And we talked about his music and all other things. And prior to that, I did one with Bobby Wilson, the son of Jackie Wilson, of his career, his musical career. And we talked about him and his father and where he's going and the whole nine yards. And so you'll get a chance, if you haven't heard those interviews, you'll get a chance to listen to them. You can listen to them anytime you want, uh, but wait until after the show, okay? And then you can go there. But you can go directly there. The link is right there. And coming up on the Blue Cafe, uh, Bobby Rydell. Of course, a lot of you know Bobby Rydell. If you're a certain age, if you're not too young, you remember him with his big hit, uh, Wild One, and other fantastic hits. He was... Uh, one of the uh, actors in that movie, Bye Bye Birdie, remember that? Bye Bye Birdie, that was one of the uh, Dick Van Dyke movies. He was there, he played Hugo, uh, and he played opposite of Anne Margaret. And I can't wait to talk to him because um, I wanna find out, you know, what it was like to work with Anne Margaret, what was it like to, you know, to work with her. And uh, I am going to be doing that interview, I'll be recording that interview this Tuesday with him uh, it's all set and ready to go. And um, within that same week, within that week, I am going to, after the production is over, I am going to uh, post the, uh, the final um, production onto the website so that you'll have that. And then you'll have still Jimmy Clanton and Bobby uh, Wilson, all of those interviews. And then we're going to be searching for more. Over the weekend, as a matter of fact, I was telling my producer, over the weekend, we're going to uh, also try to... Uh, Think about who's next because it's been a it's been a kind of a space in between interviews and we want to get some more interviews out there. So after we do the Bobby Rydell and I'm over the weekend, I'm going to be thinking about you know who I'm going to have next. If you have any suggestions and ideas who you'd like to hear on the Blue Cafe, you know, let us know. You know, uh, it could be anybody. Like I said, we do newsmakers and we do people of entertainment, and so uh, we look forward to doing that. Uh, DJ Pete gave me a weather forecast uh, out in Portland, Maine. His weather for today is partly cloudy skies. He has highs 39 degrees. That's like a heat wave compared to what he normally gets. And low tonight's uh, 27 degrees. Naoto from Jacoby, from uh, Kobe, Japan, just gave us his weather forecast. It's clear skies right now, 60 degrees, and. Uh, he has east southeast winds at 45 miles per hour. It's pretty tough. 45 miles per hour. So thank you, Naoto and DJ Pete. Thank you, DJ Pete. We'll see you in just a few minutes. And all of you who are chimed in, thank you for being along with us on this Friday here on the Coffee Hour. Okay, so um now, um, we, we're going to we're going to uh, keep things rolling here. As I said, uh, DJ Pete will be here, but before DJ Pete gets here, we'll talk about a few other things. Um, we talked about baseball, and baseball is back. And um, again, things are starting to open up again. P 
people are coming out doing their thing. We have to do things in moderation. I passed a diner yesterday on my way to get vaccinated. I passed a diner yesterday. And they, even though it wasn't crowded, but there were people in there actually having lunch. And like I said, it wasn't crowded and they were spaced out. So I guess that's okay. I guess that's okay. You know, but it was inside because the diner didn't provide anything on the outside. Which, you know, a lot of things, a lot of people, franchises do, they, they want, they don't want you inside. They'd rather have you outside, but they were in there. They were like, I guess there were like maybe four people. And I saw, I saw a couple on one side and a couple on the other side. Maybe that's not so bad. Uh, maybe that's what they wanted the, that way. But it looks like a nice diner. I love diners. I love diners. There's nothing like a diner that can make a good burger. That's the kind of diner I like. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just do the takeout kind of thing. But I can't wait, to, you know, for actually sit in a diner. I love a diner. It, it, it's, it's like I'm a New York kid. And there's nothing like sitting in a diner with a cup of coffee, looking out the window and watching people go by. It's one of those kind of things. I, I, I miss that. Uh, and so, like I say, we get all of that back. And when we do, uh, let's not take it all for granted. Uh, more people are coming in. So I just want to say hi, you guys. Thank you for being with us on this Friday. And just in case it's your first time with us, don't make it your last time. Uh, be part of us. Make us part of your routine every Friday. And just in case you're just joining us for the first time, we're here every, every Friday, every Friday at um, 10 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Eastern. So um, make sure that is. And of course, we have our friends uh, who watch us on Facebook. We thank you so much for that. I also, uh, the, 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 uh, I, I didn't mention that I post that website, um, uh, Better Help, Better Help. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com. I also posted it on, on the YouTube channel, too, so it's right there. You can see it as you scroll down on the, um, on the chat area. It's all right there. So I want to give you more information as it comes in, and we'll see about doing that. So what are you going to do over the weekend? Nobody knows. If you're having a good weather forecast, maybe you can go outside and do a little jogging. I don't think there's anything of anything wrong about going outside because no one is saying stay home, don't go out. No one is stay, saying that anymore. But be very careful because, like I said, this new wave is in. It's in, and we don't know how long it's going to be here. We only know that it's up to you. And for you to uh, let's get rid of, rid of this whole thing, this whole pandemic, we want to get out of it and get back to normal, you gotta continue to wear these. I can't stress them enough. These are the masks. They're very simple to wear. Hey, they could be a little uncomfortable sometimes. Sometimes you can't breathe. You know how to put these things on, right? These are the ear, these go behind your ear. Now, some people have the, um, the more sophisticated mask uh, that the doctors use. A lot of them have that. And, um, Whatever you can do, whatever you can do to protect yourself, because ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Um, people uh, people with, with common sense, they, they're taking the precautions, they're doing it. They're going as far as wearing those transparent face shields along with the mask. So those are smart people. And we'll be talking more about that as we go along. We just want to make sure that everybody's on one accord with that. And of course, speaking on one accord, let's say we got DJ Pete on the line, DJ Pete. And uh, he's here with uh, information for you. All right. He's going to tell us about information entertainment world. What do you got for us, Pete? How are you doing today? I got, uh, I got about uh, seven people here. Seven people? Uh, only seven, yeah. Only seven. <laughs> uh, so let's start off with uh, born March 29th, 1947, Robert Gordon, American musician, uh, rockabilly style. This is the biggest thing today. Uh, he's still playing a lot of great music, uh, had a lot of albums, and covered a lot of great tunes. Um, Rockabilly Boogie was one of his number one hits, uh, and his version of Flying Saucer Rock and Roll also, which was an old Billy Lee Riley tune. Uh, he, his major, uh, Robert's major influences were, was Gene Vincent, Billy Lee Riley, Eddie Cochran, and Elvis Presley from... Uh, Pretty much the old Sun Records uh, crew right there. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, also born this week, March 29th, 1909, Aubrey Wilson Mulligan, professionally known as Moon Mulligan. Uh, he was nicknamed the king of the hillbilly piano players. Uh, American country western singer, songwriter, and pianist, uh, member of the Grand Old Opry. Seven Nights to Rock uh, is one of his famous tunes, and that, that number has been covered by a lot of people. Uh, his style of western swing music had some influence from the big band jazz era also on it. Uh, let's see. Born this week, March 30th, 1945, Eric Patrick. Clapton, uh, English rock and blues guitarist, singer, songwriter, uh, member of the bands The Yardbirds, Cream, uh, and a, very, a lot of uh, other stuff today. He has so many great tunes, I don't even know where to start <laughs> with him. Uh, he, he's such a great, uh, such a great guitarist. Um, Let's see, born this week, March 31st, 1935, Herb Alpert, uh, American trumpeter uh, who led the Herb Alpert in the Tijuana Brass Band in the 1960s. Um, I remember listening to these guys when I was a kid a lot. They would, they would make appearances on TV shows and, and you'd hear them on the radio a lot also. Uh, let's see. Born this week, April 1st, 1927, Joseph Amos Milburn, uh, known as Amos Milburn, uh, American rhythm and blues singer, a pianist, popular in the 1940s and 50s. Um, Shake Shake, Get Some Cake was one of his great uh, jumping tunes, uh, as, as, and he had many more. Uh, one Scotch, One Bourbon, One Beer is, is one of his tunes. Bad Bad Whiskey, uh, Chicken Shack Boogie, and, and many more. Uh, great, great sound from Amos Milporn. I, I, I like to listen to his music and and let, and let Me Go Home Whiskey, too. I don't know if you ever heard that one. I probably have, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> let's see. Born this week, April 2nd. That's today, 1941. Barry Eugene Barry Hansen, professionally known as Dr. Demento, American radio disc jockey, broadcaster, and record collector of novelty songs. Uh, he was uh, pretty much the comedian guy of disc jockeys who would collect all these funny tunes and, and started a radio show uh, in Los Angeles, California um, back, back in 1970. Now, I, re I remember hearing his show here in Portland, Maine, in the late 70s, mid, mid to late 70s, uh, and as, as much, as little as I knew about radio broadcasting at the time, uh, I thought it was like remote from some location, but no, actually, his show was pr uh, printed on records and was mailed out to all the radio stations uh, that... Uh, that had his music on it. Uh, he promoted a lot of great musicians like uh, Spike Jones and City Silkers, uh, Stan Freeberg, Tom Lehrer, and Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, and speaking of Tom Lehrer, uh, no, no, he's going to be next week. <laughs> his birthday is coming up next week, so I'll hold off on him. Um, let's see. And finally, I have born April 3rd, 1944, Michael Anthony Tony Orlando Casavides. <laughs> That's a long name. Tony Orlando uh, was his uh, professional name, American singer, songwriter, producer, music executive, and actor. Uh, uh, mostly known for his part uh, with Tony Orlando and Dawn. Uh, I remember seeing them a lot in the 1970s. Uh, great sound back then. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Uh, everyone's favorite tune there. And that's what I have this week, Frank. Okay. And what I have this week are some birthdays too, but most of them are not with us anymore. But let's see. Country singer Emmy Lou Harris. She's still with us. She's 74 today. Uh, the late Larry Coyell, a jazz guitarist, he would have been 78. Uh, Leon Russell would have been 79. He's a singer. 
the late Marvin Gaye would have been 82 today. You know, as a matter of fact, yesterday, yesterday um, was the day that the first was the day that he got killed just before his birthday. Right. So the day before. But today he would have been 82 years old today. And let's see, you have Herbert Mills. Now, you, you play Herbert Mills, right? The Mills brothers. All right. One of the brothers, Herbert Mills, he would have been 109. And Charles Honey Cole, a great tap dancer and an actor. You might have saw, remember him on, on that movie, uh, Dirty Dancing. And uh, he, was, he was on there. He would have been 110. So th that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I remember you talking about court cases earlier, and, yeah. and I had the unfortunate experience of being a witness in a court case back in 1992. <laughs> mm. And uh, I tell you, it was the strangest thing, I, I mean, strangest thing I've ever been to because uh, uh, I, after that day, I said to myself, I don't think I ever want to be a witness to something again, no matter what it is. <laughs> uh, just because, you know, the scheduling it, I don't know what court cases are like in your neck of the woods, um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, we could, we could probably have, the, you'll probably have to come in tomorrow. So you got to really, like, hold your schedule open and wait for a phone call. Uh, it was just the, the, the strangest thing. A friend of mine was also a witness to this uh, incident, and uh, he went in ahead of me to the courtroom uh, to be asked questions. And uh, on, on, the first, on the second day we got in there, and uh, five minutes after he got in, he came out with someone, and... They were shaking their heads, and he said, I've never seen that happen before. I'm like, what happened? He's like, one of the jurors threw up. <laughs> oh. Now, okay, I understand that. I, that, that can happen. Um, but, uh, you know. I, I remember there, when. I there were also a lot of other delays that would happen. Yeah. And this was 10 years after something happened, too. So if you try to remember back, some incident that happened 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I, Gosh, it, I mean. <laughs> I know I know. some people like to um, experience jury duty. I've done it a few times. Uh, there was one that um, it was on a murder trial. And um, they didn't take me. They didn't take me in. And the reason they didn't take me in at the time, I don't know if they do this anymore. The reason they didn't take me for that jury to be part of that jury uh, was because of the fact they asked that the judge asked me, do you have any family or friends in law enforcement? Right. And I said, yeah, my uncle, my, my mother's brother was a, was an officer. Threw me right out. Dismiss. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that they do that anymore though. Yeah. I, I know. Uh, let's see. Uh, fall of 2019, I got paperwork in the mail to be on jury duty. I'm like, that's great. And I, and I, not that I didn't want, well, I didn't really want to, to be honest. I know it's a great, it's a great thing to be asked to be put on it, but sometimes it can. I don't know if it's a great thing. It's an experience. It's a great experience. Yes. And, uh, I'm not saying that's bad, uh, mm. but it came at a bad time where I've been, I was taking care of my parents Yeah, and, uh, I had, just been diagnosed with cancer i just wrote him a, a nice long letter asking not to be on it and never heard back from them so i guess i'm off the hook right now yeah well you better make sure though <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i mean I, I i right now i have plenty of time to you know if if they want me in for something uh yeah. you know we'll see yeah okay pete i guess we'll catch you back here next week all right frank uh yeah uh thanks uh, to you and shout out to Brian and everybody watching in Facebook and YouTube world. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Okay. Take care of yourself. All right. Goodbye. Have a good one. That was Pete, DJ Pete. He's always with us. DJ Pete. Oh, by the way, DJ Pete, if you can hear me, I hung up. Uh, post your show. Post your, uh, your schedule, your show schedule so we can get that on. 
Uh, so he's here every week. Uh, he's part of our 2020 feature. And of course, he gives us all of the information, entertainment, and then he recites the birthday of the people who are celebrating this week, and there were quite a few. So thank you, DJ Pete. We'll see you back here next week. I'm a poet and don't even know it. I want to say hello to Nick. He's watching us on YouTube TV. Nick, thank you so much. Nick says, love watching. Thank you so much, Nick. I really appreciate that. Don't be a stranger. Come back again and again. We're here every Friday, every Friday at this time. Okay, uh, Nick, by the way, if you're still watching, you know, can you tell us where you're from, where you're watching from? That, that's important to us. We'd like to know that. And uh, so that's it. That's where we are. And um, uh, listen, you know, it, it, we just had so much, many things to talk about. So talking about jury duty, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I think maybe I don't want to talk it up. Maybe I'm due to go back again. I don't know. Whenever they call you, you know, whenever they call you, they just call you, you know. But uh, uh, I, I just feel for the people uh, who are working this case now in, in Minneapolis, uh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> this is going to be a long trial. This could go on for several weeks. You know, a couple of months. I don't know. It could go on several weeks. We don't know. You have to see how it pans out. But it's it's a tough case. Uh, and but I'm still rooting for the family. I'm rooting for that family, and I, I pray for their justice. I hope uh, everything comes in their favor because money doesn't bring back anything. Ah, uh, Nick is still out there. He's coming out of uh, Pittsburgh, PA. There we go, Pittsburgh, PA. And in Pittsburgh, is the weather fine out there, Nick? How's the weather out there? You know, how's the weather out there? Because we, what we do, we have people, they come in and they give us a, a weather forecast from where they are. And we're having a good one so far in New York. Uh, so thank you for being with us, Nick. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the house. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll stay with us each week as we chug along here on the coffee hours. Excuse me, guys, while I shoot up. Oh, boy. Okay, so uh, let's see. DJ Pete gave us some information and because um, he's on board with this COVID-19. This is what he, he posted this. He says, uh, COVID-19 is destroying the li uh, uh, destroying li uh, live uh, events. It's true, it's destroying live events, but we'll get it all back. Live events and entertainment. And um, please see, uh, what does he has here? Uh, what does that say? We make, we make events. Okay, he's a, he has a web flex. Uh, we make events. That's, he has a website called We Make Events. But most importantly, right now, I want to talk about his show. His show, uh, he has a couple of shows. He has a show that comes on www radio airwaves uh, c uh, dot uk, and he's on that station. That's usually uh, UK. Usually stands for United Kingdom. And uh, he's on there Thursdays uh, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Mondays, I'm sorry, Mondays from 10, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And on Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And you could also catch him on radio station WMPG in Portland, Maine. And if you're not in Portland, you can't pick it up. Uh, there's no excuse because there's a website, www.wmpg.org. And he's on every other Tuesday between 8 30 p.m. and 10 p.m. and of course all times are Eastern so everything here is Eastern so there you go uh, it's cold in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania it's cold out there and I understand it's some it's cold in some parts of Florida you know uh, that, so Nick don't take off your jackets and your sweaters just yet because sometimes it gets a little warm I, I do what they call what they, they call this they got you weather when the weather, like tomorrow for us here in New York, is going to go up to 55 degrees. Now, that's pretty warm for this time of the year. And I think, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to go out there and they'll have their sunglasses on and they'll have their short shorts and they'll have their uh, sleeveless shirts. And that's not the time to do it, you know, because just before you know it, <laughs> it's cold again and you're lying in bed with another cold. And that's what they call gotcha. <laughs> so it's the gotcha weather. So don't get don't get don't get caught up in that one. You know you don't want to get caught up in that one. 
Okay, uh, we're, we're, I can't believe how the time goes by so quick. We're just about uh, finished with the show. We're all just about finished. And, uh, but it's always great to have you guys aboard with us. Uh, and I, want, I couldn't stress enough for you guys to always uh, stay protocol and keep your mask on. Uh, keep that six feet distance going from other people, whether you're in a supermarket, you know, the grocery store or, uh, or, or the doctor's office or whatever, you know, uh, things are starting to pick up. We want to see it pick up. However, I understand there's a new surge coming along and that's only because we have a few people that are just not, you know, heeding to what's happening here as far as the pandemic is going on. And we want to get rid of it because I do understand young people, you know, what they did in Florida, you know, they, they were bunched together and they were having a good time. And I understand, I get it. I was young myself. I'm to communicate and, 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 and uh, congregate with all of my friends and just have a good time. I get that. Uh, but we got to do that safely. Uh, so if you're going to congregate, you know, um, at least take your shots. At least take your shots. You know, uh, as I said it earlier, just in case you didn't hear it earlier, I, I took my second dose yesterday. So, um, and they say with the second dose, if you live in a household, you have a family, you don't have to wear your mask. If you're all vaccinated, you're fully vaccinated. Because you're with your family, so it's, it's safe. You know, you know the people that you're living with, so it's safe. Uh, and they say that if you're fully vaccinated, as long as it's not in a big crowd of people, you know, a few people in the house, you know, you can still hug and kiss, and uh, which is one of my favorite pastimes. You know, I, I'm a hugger, I'm a kisser, uh, and I love people, and I and I love to do that. And uh, all of us will get back to that full time, but we must get past this virus. We've got to get past this virus. So let's save lives. Let's save the agony of staying home and, and staying away from people six feet away. Let's, let's save that. Let's continue to wear the mask. Um, and as I said, a lot of people, they wear their face shields, the transparent sh face shields. And let's just bond together and, and, and just get rid of this whole thing. Because this, this pandemic though, that it doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about me. You know, they don't care how old you are. I don't care how much money you're making. It doesn't care about that. You know, they find an open area for you and they're going to jump right in. All right. So we want to avoid all of that. Uh, I think that's going to wrap up things for today. That's going to wrap up things for today as I look at the clock. Um, but when they say, look at the clock on the wall, uh, I will um, be back here on Thursday, Thursday. Don't forget to check out our show Thursday. Uh, Talk Back Live every Thursday right here on Facebook Live. It's every Thursday. It's the radio portion of it. Every Thursday between uh, 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you know that it's Eastern because it's different time zone, you know, so it's Eastern. And uh, we'll be, Brian Camp will be with me uh, with the latest developments in today's world of sports, as he always do. Uh, don't forget to check out my podcast, Blue Cafe. If you look up there, for those of you who are on uh, Facebook, look up there in the uh, subject area or look over here, depending on how you're watching the show. In the subject area, you see at the very bottom, it says Blue Cafe, and underneath that, it has the direct link. If you're watching on YouTube, at the very top, all that information up there, uh, you have my email address, my telephone number, everything is there. But at the very bottom of all of that, it says the Blue Cafe. It has the direct link. Go there. My latest uh, interview was with Jimmy Clanton, and I think you'll like that. And, of course, another interview with Bobby Wilson, the son of Jackie Wilson. Bobby Rydell is going to be with me on that show. I'm going to do a recording with him on Tuesday, and uh, we'll actually post that show within that week within next week. So I look forward to seeing you guys then. I'll be back here next week, again, every Friday from uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern, make sure everything is Eastern, right here on Facebook Lives. And until then, you guys have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, please, by all means, stay safe. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.